welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has spent years closing deals on homes with some of the biggest celebrities. Her clients include Offset and Cardi B, Candy Burst, and Toya Carter Wright. And beyond that, she's a lifetime member of the Atlanta Board of Realtors, multi million dollar club, and she's here with some important tips for home buyers and sellers. Please welcome Brandy Hunter. Welcome. Thank you. Thank thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us when is the best time to buy a home? So there's no better time than the present. Mm -hmm. No better time than the present. I always say it's the absolute best time to buy now. Of course, our interest rates are at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. So you can get in a home for less than what you're paying for rent. Really? So it totally makes sense to purchase right now. You know, I heard that renting in the winter and the spring, you, you can save a lot. Is that with buyers as well, if you buy in a house? Not necessarily. Our market tends to slow down some during the winter months. Okay. But it's still, you will find the most active and serious buyers are out during these times of the year. Year. You have people that are relocating, you know, transferring jobs, people that need to be in the home in their home mm -hmm. before the end of the year for tax purposes. So it's an ideal time yes. to purchase right now. So um, but you find in the spring months that you know, everyone decides to put their homes on the market at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's more competition, right. more activity. Okay. So it's not necessarily a better time to do it either then or there. It's really what works best for your situation. Mm -hmm. um, but while these interest rates are as low as they are, of course, we don't have a, a crystal ball to predict when they're going yes. to change. Mm -hmm. yes. But they're good. So it's capitalize on that while you can. Mm. Okay, so home buyer in the market, what should I know? before purchasing a home? So I think the most vital thing that you should do as a consumer, as a purchaser, is to vet the agent that you're working with. Mm -hmm. The professional that you're working with is probably the biggest decision that you'll make. You wanna make certain that they're qualified, you wanna make certain that they have access to the resources that you'll need mm -hmm. in order to take advantage of programs that are out there available to you. Um, this process, you're purchasing the largest and most valuable asset that you will ever have. So that's a pretty big deal. Yes. So you just yes, don't want to do that haphazardly. You want to make sure you, you take the time to vet that person. That person should consult with you, um, sit down, do a needs analysis, determine what your goals are, find out what the best location is, if it's price point driven, if it's area driven, if it's school driven. So all those mm. things play a factor yes, into does. where you purchase. Mm. So that consultation is, is vital and makes certain that you hire the right professional. Yes. So when do you know that you're financially ready to buy a home? Well, it's important that you have at least three and a half to anywhere between three and a half to five percent down. Mm -hmm. So that's what your average um, either FHA or conventional loan is. So you, you'll need your down payment. However, there are programs out here that have you, um, if you qualify, you can do, uh, use 100 percent financing. So, um, but that depends on your credit score. That depends on a few different variables. And if you get with the right lender, they can let you know what programs that you qualify for. So at minimum, you'll need to have uh, between three and three and a half and five percent down. And of course, you may need reserves. Reserves mm. are if you if your debt to income is too high. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know how much you make and how much debt that you have mm -hmm. is always a factor in how much you can qualify for. So um, your debt to income should be lower than 55% mm -hmm. and then you won't have to have reserves. If you will need reserves, you're looking at probably about one to three months of whatever your monthly payment is and that's including taxes um, and insurance. Mm -hmm. And of course, what your utilities might be, yeah, yeah the, well, all of those well, things. Well, a lender doesn't necessarily factor in utilities. They look at all of your debt, but as a homeowner, you mm -hmm. should mm -hmm. factor yes, in all of your definitely. activities. Right. You have to factor in maintenance, of mm -hmm. course, maintenance and upkeep. Yeah. That is one thing that you don't have to do as a renter. However, as a purchaser, you're investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. So that and that asset will grow and appreciate over time. Okay, so I have my three to five percent. Mm -hmm. I have my reserve for you know one to three months. But how much realistically should I have in the bank when I'm ready to purchase my home? Well, really, that that's what you need. Now you should have more if you're intending to furnish that house. Yeah, <laughs> can't be that's house poor. poor. You can't be house poor. Can't be house poor. Yeah. So, but if you look at it, if I mean, if you're if you're right now renting a home and you can handle that, you know, reasonably, then you should you should always consider purchasing because you realistically because rental rates are as high as they are in Atlanta mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're one of the highest in the country and you know for what you can get for renting you could absolutely yeah, get for purchasing. Yeah. Own it, all right. Yeah. Let's talk credit score. Yes. Now um, where should your credit score be in order so, to purchase? Um, interestingly enough you can get an FHA loan with as low as a 580 credit score. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't know that. Really? Our lending wow. guidelines have loosened and you can get in a home with a, uh, with a 580 score with as little as three and a half percent down. Ooh. Actually, you can get as low as a 520 score, but you'll have to put down more money. Yeah, but that, that depends on the purchase price of your home. It right. depends on the exactly. purchase right. pri price, and of course that will dictate your interest rate. Right. So to put yourself in the best position, you want to have at least a 620 score. That's going to give you 620 to 620, 680. That will give you the best interest rate. Well, let's talk about when you want to do home improvements before selling your home. Yes. A lot of people, they, they make improvements for their taste. So kind of tell us the do's and don'ts of making improvements when selling your home or, or, or over improving. Yeah, oh, over improving is something that you absolutely have to keep in mind. You don't want to price yourself out of your community or your neighborhood, mm. making improvements that, or you can look at it this way and say, you know what, these are improvements I'm making for my personal enjoyment. I may not see this as a return when I sell my home, but I, my family and I have enjoyed this investment. Right. So you can look at it that way. But if you're looking to capitalize in terms of, you know, what investment I make in my home, I will see a return on this. Kitchens doing minor remodels in your <laughs> kitchens and bathrooms. <laughs> you know, ladies always love a beautiful kitchen, yes. beautiful bathrooms, you know, updating your backsplash, updating appliances. A fresh coat of paint throughout Ooh. a house does mm -hmm. wonders. Yes, it, does. it does wonders. Yes, it so does. neutralizing your home, um, making sure that you don't have too many colors going on. So you just want to make certain that the buyer that you have to, you want to make it inviting for that and welcoming for that new mm -hmm. buyer. So you have to depersonalize, don't have all of your pictures everywhere. You want the, the buyer to be able to envision themselves yeah, in that home. Make some cookies, make it smell like yes, 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 absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, okay, quick question before you run out of time. Okay. Let's say you have your home, you have your properties, and let's say you want to invest in a property. Mm -hmm. How many is too much to start with? How many investment properties How many investment is too much? Properties? How many is well, it all depends. See, and, and that's where having a good lender that can look, analyze your financial profile. Um, most people start with one. A multifamily would be a great investment property to start with. Why? Um, why? Because one, you're, you, you're getting to capitalize on having multiple renters right. in that one building. Right. So that's a great and you're first time investment. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. yes. So that's also a good tip to Oh, Brandy, thank you so much for coming here and giving absolutely. us so much insight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Time. Yes. Give me yes. another house for Christmas. And <laughs> <laughs> more tips on buying and selling homes. And be sure to check out Brandy Hunter Lewis's website, brandyhunter.com.